Good afternoon, our viewers from Nigeria, Africa, and across the globe. We're having this afternoon the executive governor of uh, Jigao State for an exclusive interview about what is happening governance-wise in Jigawa State. Good afternoon, Governor. Good afternoon, how are you? Let me start with this question, uh, Your Excellency. From your assumption of duties as the Executive Governor of uh, Jigawa State to today, what are your major key achievements that are predicated on good governance and visionary leadership? Well, Alhamdulillah, thank you very much. Uh, you see, when we came in, we came in with a clear vision and mission for Jigawa State. We have what we call our 12 point agenda, and that is agenda encapsulates almost all we intend to do for the people of Jigawa State within the next four years. Now, part of this agenda is uh, one, agriculture. Agriculture is the main say of the major driver of the Jigawa State economy, and uh, therefore we feel that that we need to emphasize agriculture because our objective is to reduce, if not eliminate totally, the level of poverty in Jigawa State. And the only way we can do that successfully is through agriculture. Because now it's the driver of the state economy and it's also the primary source of livelihood for the majority, more than 80% of the people in Jigawa State because it's an agrarian state. Now, because of this, we give a serious focus to agriculture. Now, when we say agriculture, we don't mean the normal subsistence agriculture. What we are doing today is we want to make sure that all our farmers, we improve the irrigation facilities, which we have started already, and uh, it's, make, it's yielding a very good result. Now, we have a cluster system of farming in Jigase, where we cluster our farmers into different clusters, and we provide them with the input, and then we provide them with all that is required, and then we also now improve the extension services Recently, we have engaged almost 1,400 extension workers. We trained them, and now they are there all over helping the farmers. So now, that has given us a very good result. Now, for instance, let me tell you one thing. Now, the, pro, uh, the wheat program initiated by the federal government, which they will use to cultivate 120 hectares all over the country. Now, Jigawa State alone was given 40,000 hectares. And as I said today... Jigawa State alone. Jigawa State alone was given 40,000 hectares by the federal government. And that portion we have taken. And in addition to the 40,000 hectares by, uh, by the federal government, the flour mills, we have also collaboration with the Nigerian flour mills. Now, and we are doing almost another additional 10 to 12,000 hectares with the Nigerian flour mill. So virtually we are doing now 50,000 hectares of weight in Jigawa State. Now, this is in addition to other things we are That's doing. That's huge. In, in, no, 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 no. in terms yeah. of rice, this is the addition we are doing in terms of vegetables. So these are all we are doing. And let me tell you, what we are doing is we are targeting the poor so that we can give them. And because of that, we have set up an independent agency of uh, Jigaze Employment and Empowerment Agency. This agency... For have, the first time in the history of the state. For the first time in the history of the state. And we have also provided an independent funding for this agency. Independent uh, funding in the sense that what we say, okay, any contractor, if you want to do any business in Jigawa State, you need to help us with the corporate social responsibility. And that corporate social responsibility is to help us employ, uh, empower our youth to become a good citizen. So you pay 5% of that. And that is going to that agency alone. As of today, we have a very good system of targeting, targeting the poor in the rural areas. Now we are undertaking a registration of all the farmers in Jigawa State. You will be registered. When you are registered, you'll be registered and then you you'll be given a passport or given a certificate. You go to the, your parcel of land and you sit there, they'll take your picture and then you'll be registered. So only those that own land are registered. So with that, we have now succeeded that we will increase our yield and more people will be brought in, into the farming business. Now, farming is a business in Zagar. It's no longer a system. In fact, you, we have a system that we want to create food seed producers. You know, seed is a major problem in this country. It is. So we now want to create seed producers in Jigawa State. Now we are targeting 1,100 graduates, agricultural graduates. 1,100. At, at least 100 graduates from each of the federal constituencies. 
So 100 times 11 federal constituencies, we have 1,100. These guys, we are going to give them all the input they request. We are going to give them all the training and we are going to attach extension services or officers to them. In addition to that, we are going to give them a parcel of land by the government. Uh, then we also give them all the water forms and all they require. So all we want them is let them produce certified seed. And this certified seed, by the time they started producing that certified seed, they will become loneliness all over. So, and that's exactly what we are working on. And then already people have shown a lot of interest and then we are working toward this. That is on the agriculture side. Now we feel education is very, very important. Education is the key also. So what we need to do in education, uh, we have as much as possible. First of all, we divided the education ministry into two. We have basic education and we have higher education. This is to ensure good management and to ensure that uh, uh, we reduce bureaucracy. So as a result of that, we have two different ministries. Now, what we are doing as of today, we find that as of today, we have also instituted a monitoring system in the education. Now, just the day before yesterday, we have launched what we call Jigao Compete. G Compete. This is an education uh, monitoring, uh, online monitoring system that will allow a, a commissioner of education or a governor or anybody, a stakeholder in education, from his the comfort of his office, he will know whether a teacher has entered a particular school or he has not, whether a teacher has entered a classroom at a point or he is not. Whether a teacher has prepared a lesson plan, what we did for the first time, all the 300, all the 200... So let me ask you, this I think is a, the first initiative yeah. in the state. Yes. And I think first also in the north. I haven't heard of it anyway. We so yeah. how have you come up with this yeah. idea? The idea is because what we did when we came, we bring in professionals. The, the guy that is a technical advisor to the governor on ICT is an international consultant. And then, but he agreed to come and serve the guy said, even free of charge, without money, and he accepted the offer. So we have put professionals that assist us to drive this process. So back to your points, you are made the points so you are making. What we are trying to do now is that Jigao compete, it will allow every, every other person who is a stakeholder in education to monitor what is happening in particular school. So the first phase we did was the 272 secondary schools we have, each principal will have given him a laptop. We are giving a router, well, an internet facility that he can use. And that internet facility can only be used for this purpose. It cannot be used for WhatsApp, it cannot be used for other, other things. It yeah, cannot be abused. Yeah. So what you do, we can be able to monitor, okay, this particular primary school, what is happening in that particular primary school? That teacher did not enter his class. What is You can easily call the headmaster from, from, anywhere the principal from anywhere and tell him, look, because there is a dashboard. That will show you each and every school. And that is what we are, we're, we're, this, how far we have reached in education. And for the first time in Jigawan now, because our level of education is get, getting low, and we felt there are so many factors that contribute. One, after resumption from school, after one day, we take for about three, four weeks. So we take it. But for the, time in Jiga, for the first time, the first term and the second term, the day, Sunday, we resume school for the boarding school, Monday lessons will start. Excellent. Primary school, any you go on Sunday, Monday that day, lesson will start. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Um, I mean, I, I couldn't help but notice the brilliant initiative you spoke about in education. That's commendable. I must commend you, sir. Um, so it gives me a sense that you're really particular about developing human capital in Jigawa State. Yes. So yes. I'd like you to talk more about other things that you're doing in terms of um, developing human capital, because we know that that's very important if you're going to attract yeah. investments into the state. Thank you. Uh, first of all, you see, in the education sector, in, in addition to this, this all this we are doing to improve literacy and numeracy. Yes. And also, we have an issue of trying to, as much as possible, to move out, out of school children. Mm. And to do that, what we did, we have established three mega Sangaya school in, okay. each, in each of the senatorial districts. That one are coming up. The Sangaya schools will now teach the numeracy, teach the literacy, and also teach the Quranic lesson for the same these guys that are roaming about. Mm. And also at the same time, there is a skill acquisition center mm. that will teach them skills. Mm. So this is to ensure that these guys that are roaming about mm -hmm. are not parking in one place. Because this uh, Sangaya school 
We'll have the hostels to accommodate the children. We'll have everything. But the government will not continue to feed them, but what we will do is we'll give them an incentive. Incentive in the sense that, okay, we will ask the uh, teachers, we'll give you a, a plot of land mm. so that you can farm and then you can grow what these guys will eat. Mm. So that's because, Fantastic. yeah, because we want sustainability. Yeah. This government said that, okay, we'll continue to feed it, there's no sustainability. But now you are giving them a land, let them grow what they want to eat throughout the year. Mm. So that is good. That is in terms of uh, what we are trying to do in that. In the health sector, uh, okay, still in the education sector, when we came in, we are now, from the time we came to this, we have employed 4,700 teachers. 4,700 teachers? Yes, within the eight months. This is improved access to education. This is improved that people will be able to have teachers. So also in the health sector, what we did is now, when we came in, we look at our hospitals, the way they are. We, there are so many programs we have put in place, especially to ensure that pregnant women, children under five, and the ages receive treatment in our hospital free of charge. Hmm. That has not been done. So we try as much as we to enforce it. Now we have enforced that and we have funded the program that people now go to our, our hospitals, they will now access pregnant women, children under five. Free of charge. Or they will access health free of charge Brilliant. in all our hospitals. Good. And that is exactly what we have. So in order to improve also the services, now recently we have ordered for the employment of what 1,000 j health. j health is a program where j something is a program like j teach j health. This is a program whereby we employ either graduates or diploma holders with requisite qualification mm. after going into intensive screening and examination. So we'll employ you on, uh, on J Health program for two years. We'll assess you during those periods. And then after the period, then you also conduct an exam for you. Once you are through with the exams, we give you permanent and patient level employment. Mm. So we have that program in health. Yeah. We have also in education. Yeah. And we have also in agri. Fantastic. These three areas. I think. Great, yes. great, great. So sir. we have this. Yeah. Great, great. So um, another topical issue um, when it comes to the states is the issue of internally generated revenue and um, you know the fact that quite a number of states in Nigeria are very reliant on federal allocations. So what is Jigawa State doing to ensure that you boost internally generated revenues in the state as well as reduce reliance on FAC allocations? If I hear you correctly, it looks like one way would be to lure in private capital you know, investments and all of that, which would then boost tax revenues. But I would like to hear you expatiate on that. Well, you see, uh, internal revenue is one of the 12-point agendas I have. Yeah. Because we believe that without revenue, you can't do what you want to do. Precisely. So, but also you have to understand, you cannot tax people on a weak economy. Of course. So, because their purchasing power is very low. So, what you intend to do, that is why we are building the agriculture so that to build the economy. And with that, we'll be able to get more revenue coming mm. into the state. Mm. Because with the development of agriculture, you are developing the entire value chain. Now you will attract investors to come and invest in agriculture, also in the value chain, entire value chain. And that will give you an advantage to collect revenue. Yes. And I think that is paying us a lot of for, for instance, we have improved now our farming, people that are engaged in farming drastically. And that has helped us now. We have decided, okay, let's apply presumptive tax system. The presumptive tax system is just for the small, small business. Now, these farmers now that are coming, they are happy to pay tax. If I grow yes. 100 bucks, yes, because they're seeing what the impact is, is, is of, ready of, to yeah, pay tax. The government is reinvesting the tax revenues in, in the, the government. Is, yeah, the government is giving us uh, 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 siblings, input, only yeah. input yeah. On, on credit. Yeah. After so, our base yeah. will pay, I will make a lot of money. So yeah. they are willing to pay tax. Yes. All, all that. So in fact, our tax system has improved and is, is, is growing day, by, day in, day out. And now, with this agricultural transformation we have, more industries are showing interest come. And that is why our now uh, Gagara, we have an industrial cluster. The industrial cluster is, and the major stakeholders of that industrial cluster are Manufacturing Association of Nigeria. As I'm taking to you today, many of them have already started erecting buildings in that space. Wow. So that is to say the, the straight drive is, is yeah. getting ground. Fantastic. Now in addition to that, we have a Moribone 
export processing zone. Migatory export processing zone. Now that Moribon X, we are now revitalizing the export processing zone. We are now working together with the NEBSA. They were there, they have supervised the place. As I'm talking to you now, about three, five companies are already showing interest to come there. And also to demonstrate our commitment to that. The Jiga said government, in collaboration with one company, we have put in a, a, a fumigation plant for hibiscus in that place. So that already the communication plant will be commissioned in the next two weeks. So that we will be able to communicate all the uh, services that we are exporting out. Fantastic. So that is to show you we, see we, we are done. driving. Yes. Congratulations, Your Excellency. We are driving all this. Excellent um, uh, response from, from you, Your Excellency. Let me ask you this. You are one of the special guests at the annual um, Africa Trade and Investment Summit organized by the Business Day, of course, the leading business paper in the West Africa. So, let me ask you, in Jigawa State, talking to the world, our viewers, what are exceptionally unique in terms of investment opportunities? Well, you see, like I said always, Jigawa State is an agrarian state, and the economy is being driven by agriculture. So agriculture is the mainstay of the Jigar State economy and it's also the source of uh, liability for the majority of the cities. So in fact, the, we have almost 22,000 square meters of land. And out of this, about 400,000 is Padama land that you can cultivate year in, year out. So the opportunities is there for land, for land, People need to come and then they will get land because but we have a clear strategy for allocation of land. We have a policy and also for PPP, we have also a, a policy. So the environment is clean and the environment, uh, the business environment is, is very, very unique and very friendly in the sense that uh, we are the second in Nigeria in terms of ease of doing business, the last assessment. So you see, and we have an investment uh, agency, a one-stop facilitation agency that can assist investor to, in fact, you will, as long as they have done their due diligence on the investor, and they confirm that the investor is somebody that can add value to our system, then they will do all the processes for him. So he don't need to go from this office, that office, no, he, they will all do the facilitate everything for him. So, he wants to, and in addition, we also have, in addition to the land, normally we give access, we give tax holiday, that you can come, do your business, we can give you tax holiday for some period of time. The, these are all set in place to ensure that we attract investors into the agricultural sector. Also in the mining sector, we have a lot of opportunities. We have solid mineral, a lot of them are there. And like I said, one advantage we have in Nigeria is that we are the safest state in Nigeria. And the safest state in the country. Security-wise, you can sleep with all your eyes closed in Jigawa. You don't have any problem. You can go to the farm even in the midnight and you can go and do your farming. Now, let me tell you what we did also. We have one area, actually, that we have a lot of security problem around Hadija, Guri, Krika, some area. For the last 20 years, there was never a time people would not be killed and there was never a time the people will finish their crops and then they will harvest it. No, for the last 20 years. But this year it happens. This is this year it this happens. Is incredible. Yes, it happens. No single soil is killed, and all the people they have put their crops. In fact, let me tell you the the one thing: the Emir of Hadeja, for the last 20 years, he has not collect zakat from his people in terms of uh, farm produce from that area because they don't do the farming. This time, last week, he went, he collected 500 bags of rice. 500 bags? 500. Four arms. Yes. So that is the arms for the poor. Yeah. That is 500 bags people have given. Because they are now have time, they, have, they can go to their farm midnight, they can do, nobody will be killed. So generally, Your Excellency, where do we see Jigawa in the next three years of your administration in terms of attracting investments? Well, I will see Jigawa in the next three years as, as one of the best investment destinations in Nigeria. 
in the next three years. In, yes, that's what we are hoping. Because, like I said, we have created the environment. The business environment is friendly. And you have all the support from an, an agency of government. And in addition to that, the, the political will of the government to assist you. Like I told you, in agriculture, we have employee extension services, workers. And we have also an out grower scheme that is facilitated by the government. So any investor that comes to Gawa, and you have the land. So what else do you need? You have the land is there, the security is there, and extension service is there, which is also supported by the government. And also there is also a facilitation for how to grow a scheme. So no matter the quantity of whatever you want to grow, you can do it. You can do it. Because you can collect land from government and you do it. And also the government will facilitate an outdoor growing scheme for whatever number of hectares you want with other farmers to do it for you. And then you uptake. Let me just say, generally, you've done so well within the last almost one year of your administration in terms of putting in the infrastructure and the system for all this thing to happen. What, how do you, what type of support do you require or would you require or you are already asking the federal government to give Jigawa State so that as a subnational, it will thrive and continue uh, to thrive. What we are telling the federal government is, like I always emphasize, I will continue to emphasize this, we are an agrarian state. So whether we like it or not, for us to kick out poverty, the only means of doing that as quick as possible is agriculture. Empower the farmers. So there's, there's need for the federal government to come home. Like what is, we need to thank the federal government 100% for the uh, wheat program. They have given 50% in incentive to our farmers. And that has gone a long way in encouraging the farmers. And that will also help improve their livelihood. So we hope the federal government will come to do something that will rise. And it rise, we are telling the federal government that we are going to do 100,000 hectares for rice. Yeah, we are, yes, we are ready to do that. From this conference, uh, this summit organized by business, what's, what is your takeaway? Well, the takeaway is, is that uh, we, as Africans, as, as Nigerians, we need as much as possible, one, to have synergy in whatever we are doing. Synergy in the sense that we agree on what is the best way out in terms of facilitating trade facilitation. And also we need to agree to create an atmosphere and an environment that is business friendly. And that is exactly the take home we have. Fantastic. So that is to show what more can we say? We, we are than, driving. Yes. Congratulations, Your Excellency. We are driving all this. What, any Thank other you. Thing no, no, no. That's, that's, that's fine. That's you fine. Would like to add, is there any other thing? Otherwise, no, yeah. all we are saying is uh, all these things we are doing, we are doing in the interest of our people. Our main objective is to ensure that we have built the Jigawa State economy. Uh, we have built it to the sense that our people will be happy, our people will be comfortable our people will have a very good and a sustainable means of livelihood so that at, at the end of it, after the assessment, would this theory at the bottom where our position will be able to be on the top. And that's exactly our objective. And that objective, we are going sure of achieving it with what we have on the ground. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency.